Welcome back to the Gridiron Expert. I know once again we are late getting out our week 11 recap, but for those of you that know how college works, usually the week before a major holiday like Thanksgiving next week, uh, I, us here at college get slammed with tests and work like that, so we have finally found time in our extremely busy schedule to bring you some of the best college football content on YouTube with our Week 11 recap. And Week 11 had its ups and downs, has its fair share of good games, but nothing too exciting. We saw eight teams in the top 25 lose, uh, and if you've gone back and watched our previous videos, that seems to be the norm. Just about every week we're averaging around seven or eight top 25 teams that are losing. Uh, we had four, though, that fell to unranked opponents, and that was when Northwestern upset Iowa with a 14-10 score, clinching Northwestern a spot in the Big Ten championship game. Tennessee stunning Kentucky, a game that many thought that the Volunteers could win, especially with Kentucky uh, kind of struggling as of late, you know, coming off that Georgia loss and whatnot. Uh, but 24-7, and they lost a 24-7 to to the Volunteers and a team that could get to a bowl game in Jeremy Pruitt's first year, so very impressive for them. Then you've got Boise State that uh, went, on, went on and took uh, care of Fresno State, 24-17, to that went a huge Mountain West showdown that could play a factor when it comes to New Year's Six Bowl berths, but of course UCF holds the major advantage there as of right now. And then the college football week kind of kicked off, at least for Power 5 schools, with a stunning upset with Wake Forest going on the road and beating North Carolina State 27-23. to And they scored a touchdown there with 30 seconds left. And a lot of people were saying that North Carolina State was overrated anyways. They were way too high in the rankings to start off at number 14. And maybe that was the case. Uh, but Wake Forest showed a lot of resiliency, a huge win if they're trying to get to a bowl game. They were down by 10 points early in the fourth quarter, battled all the way back, and pulled off the stunning upset over the Wolfpack. Some other big games that happened in Week 11, Ohio State and Michigan State. A lot of people saw that game, including myself. I stuck with Ohio State, stuck with my initial pick, but some people saw that as a trendy upset pick, uh, you know, with, especially with Ohio State struggling the week before uh, against uh, Nebraska. People thought, you know, that there was a chance that maybe Michigan State could catch them off guard with it being at home and get the win. And that game was only 9-6 to six entering the fourth quarter. you got to keep that in mind. It was only a three-point game. But in the end, the Buckeyes pulled it out 26-6. to six. A great defensive performance by the Buckeyes and great special teams performance as well, pinning Michigan State deep in their own territory multiple times, uh, resulting in a fumble in the end zone, I believe a safety as well. Alabama recorded their second straight shutout against a uh, top 25 opponent, shutting out LSU uh, two weeks ago, 29 to nothing, shutting out Mississippi State this past week, 24 to nothing. Uh, and but the problem is a. Tua Tungabaloa has been injured. Now, I'm not saying he's out for the season or anything, but he has been battling a knee injury. We know that. He took a shot to the knee in that game against the Bulldogs. So will he be ready in time for that Auburn game in two weeks? Because I know no one is worried about the Citadel coming up this Saturday. As we mentioned before, Northwestern sitting at 6-4, and four, who failed to record a win in non-conference play. With that win over Iowa, clinched a spot in the Big Ten Championship game. Could very well be 8-4 and four, or could very well be 6-6 six and six, uh, when the Big Ten Championship game rolls around. Uh, so obviously uh, exciting for Northwestern fans, but also kind of disappointing as well to think of what could have been. If they had pulled out some of those non-conference wins, including a blown lead to Akron, uh, I believe a 14-point loss to Duke. Uh, if they had won those games, where they would be right now, whether they'd be in the running for a playoff spot, who knows. But 6-4 and four for the Wildcats and a spot in the Big Ten title game against potentially Michigan or Ohio State. Oklahoma survived a thriller in Bedlam, 48-47 to against Oklahoma State, where the Cowboys' two-point conversion failed, uh, which is a matter of a few seconds left, 48-47 to for the Cowboys, or for the Sooners, and, and what a game it was. Taylor Cornelius, a career-high 501 yards through the airs for Oklahoma State, uh, and then you had Kyler Murray throwing for over 300 yards as well. Combined, those two schools put up a combined 1,342 yards of total offense, So, and that's usually the case. It always is a major shootout when it comes to Oklahoma and Oklahoma State, and we just had another great game to throw into that series there. Uh, Georgia taking care of Auburn, uh, 27 to 10. Auburn now six and four, a team that we have trending down, and we'll touch on them in a second. Is Gus Malzahn on the hot seat? Is he going to get fired? We'll touch on that in a second as well. Uh, but Georgia taking care of business there and shouldn't lose again uh, before that national for that uh, SEC title game against Alabama in December. So that thing is going to be huge with major playoff implications. We'll touch on that uh, in, in future videos as well. So make sure you stay tuned for that. Notre Dame with Brandon Wimbush, because Ian Book was out, had three first-half touchdowns but did have two interceptions. Nonetheless, the Fighting Irish took care of Florida State, a very struggling Florida State team, 42-13, to remain undefeated and in the top three uh, of the college football playoff rankings. Texas stunned Texas Tech 41-34 to with a touchdown with 21 seconds left that, if you go back and look, was very similar to Michael Crabtree's touchdown catch that beat Texas just 10 years ago. Uh, it, was, it was remarkable how similar those two plays were, uh, but Texas getting a huge win on the road uh, to try to keep their slight Big 12 title hopes alive. And then Clemson, where college game day was at Boston College, 
Stifled Boston College 27 to 7. The only touchdown coming on a, a remarkable punt return by the Eagles, but couldn't get any offense going besides that. 12 0 is looking inevitable for the Clemson Tigers. Uh, shouldn't lose again. Should take care of South Carolina. I believe they've got Duke this Saturday. So they should be 12 0 entering the ACC championship game where they will probably play another mediocre team, but has also been trending up in Pittsburgh, uh, which is ironic to me that we've got Northwestern and Pittsburgh, two teams that have that are both have, have four losses and might be playing for their conference championship game. Very rare that you see that, uh, but we might have two of those schools happening this year. Uh, so we're going to go and break down how we did. We got back on track. We reached our standards. What we wanted, one of our better weeks here at the Gridiron Expert over the entire season, 28-6 and six in Week 11, 82.4% uh, when you break it down like that. But by far, one of our better weeks. Uh, we also went a perfect 4-0 and on prediction changes. And as you know, those always come out uh, on Twitter at Gridiron Expert. So overall, we are now 323 and 106, which is 75.3%. So we have our goal of 75% kind of locked in right now. Hopefully you can stay that way, but we want to try to get better. We want to try to get above 76% or still right at it, which is where we were last year. Uh, and I need to go back and look at the stats from last year. We'll, we'll have a video dedicated to how we just combining this year's stats and last year's stats and how we did overall. Uh, but right now I'm happy with where we're at. Against the spread, 4-4, four and four, right at 500. Uh, and that's usually been the trend there. Every now and then we have a really good week, 7-1, and 6-2. and two, uh, Or maybe we're 3-5, and 4-4. Four and four, But we've never really done anything worse uh, than that. And we, we had not go, gone 8-0 no this season like we would have hoped. Overall, though, 61-50, and 50, right at 55%. And I know depending on what sports book you're looking at, some they have different requirements. Is it 52%? Is it 55%? Is it right at 50%? Uh, but our goal for this season is just to stay above 50%. We are 5% above that, and I think we will certainly reach that goal by the end of the year. And as always, spread picks and prediction changes always coming out on Twitter at Gridiron Expert. So we're going to break down our teams trending up and trending down. And, it, you know, you start to struggle here because we try not to put teams that are consistently good and consistently in the top 10 on our teams trending up. Sometimes that happens. We try to get some, uh, some recognition for some of those smaller schools or teams that are quietly doing good things but just aren't getting the attention that they deserve. And one of those teams is Pittsburgh. They have won four of their last five games. They have won three straight by an average of 43 points per game. They're not, not winning those games by 43 points per game, but they're averaging scoring 43 points per game. So their offense has really uh, just taken, you know, it's just escalated. It's really taken a turn for the better. Uh, because if you remember, they held Notre Dame to a very close game. Only lost to the Fighting Irish 19-14. to And after that, Things have started trending up for the Panthers, uh, and they are nearing a dead lot for the ACC title game. If they can close out the season uh, in good fashion, sitting at 6-4 and four right now, they will make the ACC title game and will play Clemson. Uh, and it'll be interesting to see if they can give Clemson a fight because we all know what happened just a couple years ago uh, in Death Valley with the Panthers going on the road and taking care of the Tigers. Don't think that'll happen this year, uh, but Pittsburgh deserves to be trending up. Uh, and in a season that we thought they'd be mediocre at best, they might be playing for the ACC championship game. So that's uh, very, very impressive for them. You look at Utah, sitting at 7-3 and three right now, just came off a 32-25 to 25 win over Oregon. And why is that impressive? It's because they were playing without their starting quarterback and their starting running back. Tyler Huntley and Zach Moss both getting injured and both coming in and doing a phenomenal job. They've won five of their last six games on top of that. The lone loss coming 38-20 to 20 to Arizona State, another game where they had some injuries going there. Uh, and so there's a chance that Utah could make the Pac-12 championship game. They are leading the South right now, the Pac-12 South division, uh, and they will more than likely play Washington State. Uh, so they deserve to be trending out. There's a chance they could finish 9-3, and 8-4, somewhere around there. A very solid year. Will the success continue, though? Oregon's not a bad team, but will the success continue without two of their huge playmakers on the offensive side of the ball? That's something we're going to have to keep our eye on. But Utah, with that performance over Oregon, deserves to be trending out. And then Georgia Tech as well. Another ACC school like Utah has won five of their last six, including wins over Virginia Tech and Miami. The Miami game was close. The Virginia Tech game, Georgia Tech just annihilated the Hokies. I think it was 49-28 to or 49-21, something like that. In Miami, they won by six. But Georgia Tech sitting at six and four. They've clinched ball eligibility. I think they're going to finish the season seven and five with a win this next week and then a loss coming to Georgia in the season finale. But not a bad year overall in a year that I was kind of borderline bowl eligibility for Georgia Tech. I think I had them going five and seven, six and six. Uh, but a great job by Paul Johnson, what he's done with the Yellow Jackets squad, especially how they've just finished the season. You've got to finish strong. And these teams are doing that when you go on a long winning streak or win uh, the majority of your games down the stretch, much like Georgia Tech and Utah have done. And then trending down, teams that we've got trending down. We've talked about Auburn before, and I'm no Auburn hater whatsoever. Uh, and they haven't been up on our trending down board, I don't think, this year. Maybe once, maybe, uh, many weeks ago. Uh, but they have lost three of their past five, the exact opposite of what we want from teams that are trending up. 
those two wins only coming against Ole Miss and Texas A&M. And that Texas A&M game, I praised them for the way they handled that, for the way Jarrett Stidham conducted that game-winning drive, a remarkable comeback. Things were looking good. Uh, and then they came into the game against Georgia, and a game we figured they wouldn't win. It was on the road, Georgia up top five team. That was not a game that Auburn was supposed to win, but they lost by 17. That's, you expected a better fight out of Auburn. They're probably going to finish the season 7-5, and five, more than likely, because they're not going to beat Alabama. It's just not going to happen, unless Tua Tagovailoa is out for that game. I highly doubt that. So then you have to begin to question yourself, will Gus Malzahn be out of a job? He just signed that huge contract extension because there were rumors that he was going to leave Auburn last year, especially with the way they finished. Is he going to be out? And I saw an interesting stat the other day. I believe it was the fifth year in a row that Auburn had, will finish with four or more losses. Fifth year in a row. And people will say, how is that possible? Last year they were in the hunt for a national championship, hunt for the college football playoff. Well, they remember, they closed out the year. They beat Alabama, but then lost back-to-back -back games with the loss to Georgia in the SEC title game and then UCF in the Peach Bowl. Finished 10-4. and four. So will Gus Malzahn be out of a job in a year that they were supposed to compete against Alabama for the SEC West? We're going to have to wait and find out. But Auburn, 6-6, six 7-5, and six, seven and five, anywhere around there. Extremely disappointing for them. The way they have finished this season, losing three of their past five, extremely disappointing as well. USC, a team that I've always told people usually gets overhyped. And I probably bit the bullet too hard there, too. I had USC going 8-4 and four this season. I think maybe 7-5, and five, somewhere around there. Uh, but they've lost three of their last four. The lone win coming against an Oregon State team, so that's nothing too impressive. They're 5-5 five and five right now. Should finish 6-6 six and six with a win over UCLA and a loss to Notre Dame in the season finale. Uh, but USC is a team that everybody gets overhyped on every year. They start in the AP, you know, top 15, top 10. Because of the recruiting class and because of the talent they have in, they always crash and burn. They never really exceed high expectations, except for the past couple of years when they had Sam Darnold and all of that talent there. Uh, but USC certainly deserves to be trending down. I try to tell people that every year, that they're not always going to be what they're cracked up to be. No one believes me. And they're 5-5 five and five right now and in danger of missing out on bowl game. If, US, if UCLA upsets USC, USC will not go bowling. So I do not think they will beat Notre Dame. Then our last team that we've got trending down, we've got Wisconsin. Uh, they've been alternating wins since October 6th. They've got a win and a loss, win, loss, and so forth. Uh, um, it, it's unbelievable to think that the Badgers were number four in the country to start off the year. And now they're sitting at six and four. That's unbelievable. So they're three and three since October 6th, uh, and their wins have come against no one too special. Their losses have come against some of the better teams in the Big Ten, Michigan, Penn State, and Northwestern, who is now playing for the Big Ten championship game. So they're not getting the wins over the solid opponents that they need to get them over. They're going to a bowl game. That's great. But in a year that many people thought they could make the college football playoff, maybe could get to the back to the Big Ten championship game and get revenge over Ohio State or Michigan or someone like that, uh, it's been a very, very disappointing year for the Badgers. But one thing that has been overshadowed in Heisman races and, and everything is the fact that Jonathan Taylor has rushed for 1,548 yards on the year. And the reason he's not getting that much attention is because, once again, Wisconsin's not a playoff contender this year. Last year they were. So you were hearing everything about Jonathan Taylor, and we're just not hearing that much about him this year, but he's having, once again, a heck of a season. Don't think he'll get invited to the Heisman ceremony just because of the talent we have at quarterback uh, in this year's class. But nonetheless, a very solid year for him, just not a solid year for the Badgers as a whole. And that's why they are trending down. So this is our Week 11 recap. Week 12 is usually the dead week. It's usually the week that we struggle to find solid games. Uh, the SEC especially is when all those teams are playing cupcake squads, getting ready for rivalry week and the final week of the season uh, to get that one that's last little you know, practice game in almost and then diving in uh, to one last resume booster before conference championships and the uh, committee makes their selection. So week 12 won't be as exciting, but we'll still find five huge games that we will have on our big board, so make sure you stay tuned for that. And as always, go check us out on Twitter at Gridiron Expert for extra updates and always here on YouTube. Please continue to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you next time on the Gridiron Expert.